Good morning, good morning, good morning, love bug. So I wanted to do this quick video this morning. Um, it kind of came up after I had some discussion post on my page over the last few days, talking about Christianity versus witchcraft and spirituality and, you know, the different practices that we, my dogs are trying to kill each other in the background, <laughs> the different practices that we either believe in or give our energy to or trust or understand or believe to be real whatever paradigms govern your life. But I want to talk specifically in this quick video about, hey, good morning, love bugs. I want to talk this morning about why sometimes when you're making that switch, you're manifesting or your energy doesn't quite transition from the religion that you believed in, whether it was Christianity, Hinduism, you were an atheist, you were just spiritually in one vein, now you're switching to a different lane. Whatever it is, a lot of times we experience that bump or that complete downfall where we were a manifesting badass. We were manifesting money and men and women and vacations and houses and car parks and free dinners and giveaways and raffles and all the things that we wanted. We had this lifestyle, right? And it was easy. And then when we switched over to this new lane, so let's just say from Christianity to spirituality, such as me, that's been my experience and a lot of my clients. So we switched from this this thing that we knew our entire lives that everybody we know is involved in, all our friends and family go. It was a large part of our ritual. It was a large part of our routine. It's a large part of what we consider life, our truth, the, the living, right, every day. So now we're in this more free form experience. We're in this more, in, I want to say enjoyable in some respects because maybe it's not as rigid. Maybe it's not as full of protocols and rights and wrongs. But now you're also experiencing this downshift because you went from a manifesting badass to over here in the spiritual lane. It's like, I can't get a, a damn thing to pop off. Like, shit ain't happening. What happened? What went wrong? Here's the thing. Nothing went wrong, per se. But you have to remember that everything is energy, right? Everything is energy. The food you eat, this wrap on my head, the clothes on my body, the mandala in the background, Everything is energy. The chair that you're sitting in, the water that you used to bathe last night or this morning, everything is energy. Now, what does that mean in relation to switching lanes and your manifesting not working? Simple. When you were involved in Christianity, if that's your experience, and you were doing the things in groups, and you were showing up in church, and everything was scheduled and everything was routine and you knew what to expect. You knew who was going to be involved. You knew how things were supposed to turn out. Your energy is grounded in that. Your energy identifies with that. Doesn't make it right or wrong. That just is. Everything that you know was based on that experience and how it's supposed to work and how it's supposed to turn out and how it's supposed to look. And it's supposed to take this amount of time or it's supposed to fall out this type of way before the manifesting kicks in or before the blessing comes or before the miracle comes or before the storm ends or whatever, right? You know this space. You know this roller coaster ride. So when you switch lanes into the spiritual journey, and you say, I'm leaving behind almost everything, let's say 80 to 90% of what I knew. And I'm getting out here and I'm researching and I'm listening and I'm talking to people and I'm asking questions and I'm doing all these new things. Yay! And then you fall flat on your face because it ain't popping. Maybe you get a free car park or maybe you get a free dinner or maybe somebody buys you coffee. But that new job you've been trying to manifest, it ain't coming. And that new boo thing you've been calling in ain't popping either or you got a dud. It's not that your manifesting isn't working, but all of your energy is still tied up in the things that you used to believe because it takes a lot mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and financially. It takes everything in you to walk away from what you knew, what is safe, what is, and what makes sense to go and do something new. It takes everything in you to shift, to shift or switch from the existence that you lived your entire life, whether you switched at 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, or 70. It takes everything in you to pull all of that energy from that existence over into this new existence. And most of us don't do that. Therein lies the problem. And let me know if this is making sense to you guys. But therein lies the problem. 
Because we think, oh, we're just going to leave that and we're going to come over here and it's going to be amazing. Hallelujah. No. It's not that it's not amazing. <clears throat> it's not that it's not amazing or that it can't be amazing. But what begins to happen is that you left everything you knew over there and yonder, off in the distance somewhere. And as you're traveling this way and moving forward, you keep looking back and saying, well, I used to do that. But it used to be this way and it used to be and I should have, could have, would have. And you're not realizing that you're still leaving all of your energy back there. Your energy is not transitioning with you moving forward into the things that you now want to co communicate to in your life, that you now want to commit to in your life, or that you now want to create in your life. And so it's a constant tug of war. You're being ridiculed from the people that you left. You're being rejected by the people that you left to try this new journey. You're being talked about. You're being ostracized. You're being blackballed or blackmailed or any number of things. So now you got guilt and shame and pain and new wounds mixed in whatever things you already had going on, which takes even more energy from the thing or things that you're trying to now create and experience. Is this making sense, guys? You said the spiritual journey is rough. Manifestations on my end take so long and most didn't meet the time frame that I needed them in. I agree with you. It's a game of patience. See, that's not actually what I'm saying. The first part, yes. Some, when there's a transition, it can take a long time. But my point is actually that it doesn't have to. It's not always a game of patience. And that's why I wanted to do this. Hey, hey, y'all chill out in there. They about to kill each other, y'all. Like, boy, have mercy. Um, but that's my point. It doesn't always need more patience. It doesn't always need more time. What you've got to figure out, whether this is still your experience or for you guys, if you're agreeing that, hey, yeah, that, that's me too. Because I've been there. This is why I'm talking about it. But what you've got to figure out how to do is start pulling your energy. Remember, you started over there. And now you're transitioning this way. So you've got to figure out how to stop looking back and saying, but I wish I could have, should have, would have. It was easier then because I had the people with me. See, this is what we miss. And I'm talking from personal experience and from client experiences that they share them with me and friends experience and random people that share stuff with me too. What happens most often when we leave Christianity, we leave safety. We leave comfort. We leave our family circles. We oftentimes leave everything and everyone that we knew that we felt understood us that made sense. And so when we get into this game of spirituality or this new roller coaster ride of spirituality, we think that we've left everything. And that's not the case. You haven't left anything. All you did was switch journeys. Whether it's a totally different thing for you or whether you're just merging new things. So for me, I still pull certain things from my, my journey in Christianity. Because they work. Because it's energy. Right? This is why praise and worship can work. Because you got hundreds or thousands of people. Whether it's 10, 20, or 100, or 200, or 10,000 in a church hall, or fellowship hall, or prayer room, or online. You have all of these people pouring in this energy to this one thing. And when you leave that atmosphere and you don't feel like you have that same support all around you and you don't see the hundreds and the 10 and the two or more agreeing and all the people that you're used to, then you think it's hard. Then you think it's impossible. Then you think it has to take longer. Then you think it can't be done. Then you think, well, I must have did something wrong. Maybe I got to go back to Christianity or I'm not doing it the right way. No, no, hun. No love bug. No badass. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. You just got to start learning how to pull the energy that you had infused into those processes to the energy that you need now in the new processes. So maybe in church, you were used to laying on the altar and using anointed oil. Boo kitty, create you some new oil. Just because you're now spiritual and not Christian doesn't mean you can't use oils. Right? Create you some more. There's hundreds and thousands of herbs out there. There's hundreds and thousands of essential oils out there. There's hundreds and thousands of crystals and stones out there. Create some new oils and anoint yourself. It still works. I'm a testament. I'm telling you. Um, I don't have any of my oils sitting right here with me. But I create my oils all the time for myself and my clients. And they work. They work. Just because you're not in that that particular ritual because all it is is ritual right just because you're not in that particular ritual anymore doesn't mean that you can't use what works for you still use it 
Maybe you're used to lying on the altar at church and, and petitioning the Holy Spirit or petitioning Jesus or petitioning God. Boo kitty, you got ancestors and angels still up there. You can still pray. You can still meditate. You can still lay prostrate if that's what works for you. Do what works for you is the point. You said that was me. Oh, you're welcome for the clarity. You said that was me. Although I changed, I still wanted to carry the vibration of Christianity. It took a while to get my whole energy together or be in alignment with the new thing. Exactly. This is why we struggle because we're thinking we have to leave everything. You don't have to leave it. You just have to figure out how to let go of the things that aren't working. Leave the things that cause you pain. Work on healing them, releasing them, and letting that shit go. Letting the people go. And hold on to the things that worked. But you don't have to completely reinvent yourself just because you left the religion and now you're spiritual. There's no law that says, I'm spiritual now. I can only exist in this lane. This is where we fail because we box ourselves in. You don't have to recreate the wheel. I promise you, you guys don't. You said it's hard. It's a process that's not smooth. It's not. Listen, it's bumpy, lumpy, curved. You're doing a lot of zigzagging, zig backing and forth and turning around and spinning and falling out and getting back up. It is not a smooth ride, but it can be a fun ride. It could be a fun ride. Yeah, yeah, you said, thanks so much. I, I struggle with this former Christian minister. I stopped everything when I left. Girl, listen, been there, done that. I grew up in church. I was Baptist in my childhood. We were in church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every, every time the doors was open, we was there. In my younger, my teen years, I left because I was mad. I don't want this shit. Then in my 20s, I went back. Then in the entirety of my 20s, I was groomed, groomed to be a pastor. I can quote scripture, boo kitty. I don't need you to come on here and telling me what the scripture says. I can probably break it down better than you because I've been to the seminary, theological seminary when I was in training. I've been ordained as a minister and an elder. Okay. So this is not a video where you get to come throw scripture at me or anyone else. And I'm not trying to call you out and ridicule you or shame you. But what you won't do is do it on this video. When I choose to hold safe space for people, that means safe space people. For everybody, not you, whether you agree or disagree. If it's not for you, don't come on. I didn't invite you. I literally didn't invite anybody to this video because I set the intention that whoever needed it would get it. So if this isn't for you, you good. Exit on out. If I'm not for you, unfriend, block, whatever. But what you guys don't do on my page or any space that I get to help dictate is shame or ridicule, especially using Christian scriptures because that ain't what they there for. So if you really start doing your research, guys, and before I get too far off in this tangent, do your research. I've been to theological seminary. If I was to go dig out the books that I have, I have a plethora of dictionaries, of concordances. I have a plethora of books that break down the scriptures. I have different translations of the scriptures. So before you just take the King James, because that's what most of y'all are reading, and start throwing at somebody in judgment, go back and read the study, study to show yourself approved. Not to me, but to whatever you believe in. And you, right? But don't use it to toss around and harm other people. Back on track. This is why a lot of people leave Christianity and go to spirituality. Because you get tired of the judgment. You get tired of the ridicule. You get tired of the backlash, right? So if that's why you left, stop doing it to yourself. If that Y'all hear them in the background killing each other. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, context, I have a new puppy. Uh, we got him like three weeks ago and he's like maybe nine weeks because he literally was abandoned in the street we rescued him and then I have a six-year-old dog like they are having the blues with each other but anyway back on track so if this is why you left that journey stop dragging all of that stuff with you and holding yourself hostage to it you left to escape the ridicule you left to escape the rejection. You left to escape the protocols and the routines and everything that you felt was holding you hostage or making you suffocate. Let it go. Do your healing work so that you can let those things go. But also look at the things that worked for you and continue to use it. Because see, this is where, uh, in my personal opinion, Christianity falls short. Everybody focuses on judgment and condemns everything. Oh, that's witchcraft. Oh, that's, that's, okay, what you think you're doing? You say it's witchcraft because they burn incense. Do you not do that? You say it's witchcraft because we over here making oils. Don't y'all do that? You say it's witchcraft because people do candle magic. Don't y'all do that? You say it's witchcraft because we calling on, don't y'all do that? 
Like literally everything that you attack from your perspective is the thing that you do. Because see, when I was in Christianity and in ministry, I was laying at the altar. I was anointing myself with oil. I was speaking in tongues, right? <laughs> Come on now. Let's, let's really talk this thing through. Stop attacking people because it doesn't line up with what you believe. You are free to believe what you believe. But do it in freedom. Don't do it hostage to your own pain that makes you attack people. And if you left it and you're now in a new journey, guys, stop holding yourself hostage to the thing that didn't work. And again, this is why the transition gets bumpy. This is why it feels like it takes a long time. Because you're holding on to all the pain and you're not using what already worked. Everything is energy. So, so think of this bowl. This is one of my favorite selenite bowls. Think of this bowl. If I take it, oh, this is an even better example. Think of this bowl. This is my little crystal goodie bowl that I keep on my desk. Can y'all see some of those goodies? It's full, right? Like if I tip it over too far, everything's going to start tumbling out. It's full. It works because I got all my goodies in it that I can pull from. Now, just because I left Christianity and I'm now spiritual doesn't mean I got to come over here with an empty bowl. Does this analogy make sense to you guys? If I start with a full bowl and I shift into an empty bowl, yeah, things are going to get a lot harder. Things are going to get more painful. They're going to get rougher. They're going to get darker because you left everything that you knew and now you're in self-discovery, but you also left the good things. So go back and really look at what worked for you. Was it altar call? Was it fellowship? Was it prayer call? Was it midnight prayer? Was it anointing yourself with all? Was it speaking in tongues? Was it calling on the name of Jesus? Was it talking to the Holy Spirit in your prayer closet? Was it writing out your petitions? That's manifesting. That's ritual. So everything you did in your Christian journey, you can do in your spiritual journey. You don't have to shun everything that works for you. Spirituality is about finding the path that works for self and living that path to the best of your abilities. That's how I view it. Now, that may not be your definition. That's mine. And I share that with you guys because it's about freedom. And I was there and I'm still there. I've been gone. I just turned 40 in December. And I've been gone from ministry since 2013 was the last time I stepped in a pulpit. And so you're talking about not quite um, seven years. And I had still shifted from full-time ministry way before 2013. But 2013 was the last time I stepped in a pulpit, right? So you're talking about a seven-year transition to where I am now. And there are still moments where shit creeps up on me like, oh, I didn't even realize that was still a wound. But when it does pop up, I have to acknowledge it and say, okay, you made yourself aware to me. Now let me heal this thing within myself. You get what I'm saying? So it's never you're just going to wake up and everything's rainbows and unicorns pooping, you know, gold. Doesn't happen like that all the time. But what you can do is acknowledge the pain as it comes up. Work on healing it, working on releasing it, and creating room for the things that you do know that work to continue to exist in you. What you can do is go back to your journey because that's what I do. People always ask me, how am I manifesting like the crazy shit that I do? That's exactly what I do. I look at what I did in Christianity, what worked for me the entirety of my you know, childhood and in my young adult years. What worked? And I use those things and the things that didn't work or that caused me pain, I gladly let them go. And I leave room for new traditions. I leave room for new teaching, new learning, new research, new questions to be asked. Because it's a forward moving process, right? But remember, if this, because everybody has different learning styles, but visual works for a lot of people. So think of this, when you were in Christianity or your organized religion, this was your cup. Your cup was full of the things that you knew that worked. Your cup was full of the things that you knew made sense and that you could do regularly to get results. And when you shifted to spirituality or no organized religion, you came over here like this because you thought you had to let everything go. And the truth is that you don't. And this is why it can feel like things are taking a long time to manifest. It can feel like things are taking a long time to happen, or it can feel like things are more painful. It can be more painful because again, a lot of us left our family circles. A lot of us left our friend circles. A lot of us left everything and everyone that we knew when we walked away from that structure.
I was blackballed. I was dogged. You hear me? My name was dragged in every ministry circle that I was in when I chose to walk away. And very few of them asked me, well, why are you walking away? They made judgments and assumptions and they ridiculed. And I had to get okay with that because I was either going to spend more time complaining about how they were hurting me, talking about how they did me wrong and giving them that unnecessary energy, or I was going to figure out how to leave them in their own pain and in their own peace and keep it moving. And you all have to figure out how to do that. And when you figure out how to do that, it's a journey. Remember, it doesn't always happen overnight for everybody. It's a journey. It's a process. But as you figure out how to do that, it is then that you learn how to start filling up this bowl over here with the things from your other bowl. It is then that you learn how to start picking up the pieces of what worked and what made sense and pulling it over here into this bowl. And so eventually you look up and what's happening? This bowl is starting to fill up. This bowl is starting to make sense. Because now things that are familiar, now things that feel good, now things that you know work, now people that you know have similar compassions and sim similar understandings are working. Do you see what's happening? I'm pulling from the things that I know. I'm pulling from the things that make sense. I'm pulling from the things that I knew made sense and happened with certain outcomes. And I'm putting it all over here. And this bowl is now filling up. So do you see how that makes sense visually, guys, when you look at that example? Walk away from the things that hurt, that you don't need, that don't serve you, that don't make sense, that don't work for you. Leave those in the past. Heal them. Release them. Let them go. Forgive them. Do whatever you got to do. And if they keep coming up, keep giving yourself grace and compassion and keep doing the work. And then start to bring in the things that you know work and create new rituals, create new experiences. Now, what are some of the ways that you can do this? Well, some of the ways that I love to release, I love burning. So I might write the things that I want to let go of or the people I want to forgive on paper and I burn it. I may do a candle ceremony and I grieve and I mourn and it's like I'm releasing and purging all that stuff. As I'm watching that candle burn, I'm letting go of it and watching that stuff burn too and releasing it. I anoint myself with oils. I may journal. If you don't like to burn, I'm a fire sign. I'm a Sagittarius, so I love fire. <laughs> if you don't like to burn, you can just get a journal. Now, if you're going to have a journal, have two separate journals. Have one journal that is nothing but the things that hurt you and that cause you pain. This is the journal that you never need to go back through and, and read through and be like, oh, I remember that pain. No. Write it. Release it. You never need to go back and read the old pages. The only thing you're doing in that journal is starting a new page or starting where you left off to release and purge out of you the things that hurt. And when that journal is done, you can burn the whole thing or throw it away. And then get you a gratitude journal. Begin to write down the things that you know that work. Begin to write down the things that are working. Begin to write down the things that feel good. Begin to write down the new things that are happening. The new revelations, the new wisdom, the new goodness that is coming. And keep track of that. Because this is how you really learn how to manifest. Listen, I know a lot of y'all get excited when it comes to hoodoo, conjure, voodoo, and everything else. And I don't knock it. Do you, boo? But before you start dibbling and dabbling to things that you don't yet understand, figure out what works for you. Then you create a strong foundation of who and what you believe in. And then you move forward into exploring, into getting mentorship, into getting help, into researching and creating new practices. Let me know if this is making sense, guys. But this is where a lot of people fall flat, too. They run from one extreme Christianity to the next extreme. And y'all over here trying to make voodoo dolls and cast spells and do hot foot powder and put people in your shoe and throw in scriptures at people. And you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. And this is why you're getting your ass handed to you. So don't leave crazy to go to crazy. Stop the crazy train. Get off of it. Figure out who you are. Figure out what worked for you in the past and why it worked and why you believed it. Work on healing and then work on creating new traditions as well. It's multifaceted. It's not just one thing that you're going to be able to do to fix it. It's multifaceted. But as you're doing those things, you're going to see a trajectory. You're going to see a process. So, for example, when it comes to cars... I got like crazy faith. I always have. But I would let people talk me out of things I couldn't do. I would let people talk me out of things I couldn't have. So my friends always tell the stories of how like I've had no job and walked into car dealerships and got brand new cars with like seven miles on the odometer. I've had a job that I hadn't started yet. Hadn't got my first paycheck and walked in and got brand new cars. 
You know what I'm saying? I've had decent credit, but had student loans that were in good standing. So for example, I went all the way through my PhD program, right? I stopped halfway through my dissertation. And yes, for those of you that are like, eh, I'm going to go back at some point. So I did all of my classwork and stopped halfway through my research because I just burned out. But that means I got a shitload of student loans. So my credit is good, but my debt ratio sometimes looks real crazy, right? Because I got over $200,000 worth of student loans. Still walked in the dealership and got another car. And my friends always are like, how the fuck? Like I'm getting turned down left and right and denied. How are you doing this? Because I don't let people tell me what they can't do for me. If you tell me no, I'm going to go back and I'm going to sit with my guides, my angelic team, my ancestors, my God, whatever I'm believing in. Hey, y'all know what I need. I know y'all know how to do it. So give me the protocol. Give me the ritual. Give me the action steps. What is it that I need to do? How am I aligning my faith? What am I needing to go for? Hey, line this up for me. And I'm coming up with a plan. And I'm working that plan. Whether they saying sit back and watch us work, we're going to tell you where to go. And that has happened. They will literally say, go to that dealership. And they'll show me a picture in my mind of a dealership that I've driven past. Oh, I need to go there. And the exact person who needs to help me is there that one day per week. That's how I got my last car. And everybody was like, what the whole fuck? Even when I bought my house, nobody even knew I was looking for a house. I had left my job on medical leave, hadn't worked in, I think, over a year. Yeah, it was almost a year. Actually, over a year when I signed the, uh, the um, papers at my closing for my, new home, for my house years ago. And my friends were like, shit, we didn't even know you was trying to get a house. What the hell? See, and my point in saying that is everybody don't need to know what you're doing. Everybody doesn't need to be in your business. This is another part of manifesting. Hey, guys, thank you for coming on. This is another part of manifesting. I know in Christianity, we used to telling everybody everything. Girl, let me call that prayer line. Get that tree activated, boo, because I need everybody to hold on and believe Jesus with me for this thing. That can work. You got to know who you have around you. So sometimes it doesn't work. And when you switch into spirituality and those same people are not accessible to you because they don't believe what you believe or they're still in your circles, but they don't like what you're doing. Those are not the people that you need to be calling and asking to work with you and help you because those are the people that are praying against you or praying on you because they mad that you had the nerve to do something different. You guys feeling me on this? Move in silence. Yes. <laughs> so there's rules, there's stipulations, there's rituals, there's protocols. Just because you get into spirituality doesn't mean it's willy nilly. There are things that you still have to figure out and that doesn't mean it's going to work the same for everybody. But you've got to figure out what happens for you and how it happens. You've got to be willing to fall on your face. You've got to be willing to experiment. And stop for the love of Jesus. Please stop telling yourself that it has to be hard. Listen, I challenge people. So for the last two years, I've been all over my social media. Healing is fun. And people are like, girl, go sit down. Shut up. Okay, well, you keep crying over there in your soup. And I'm going to keep on trucking and doing what I'm doing and helping people do it different. And now people are starting to realize, oh, snap, healing can be fun. It's not all crying tears. Yeah, it's a lot of spiritual baths. It's a lot of spiritual cleansing. It's a lot of work. But it can also be fun. I have adventures. I have a lot of laughter. I crack a lot of jokes. I learn to enjoy the process. So again, let me sum this up. Take what works for you in Christianity or whatever organized religion you were a part of decipher what works and what hurt release the hurt work on healing those wounds work on filling that space with love and compassion and grace for yourself and now take the things that worked and bring them over to this new side of your own spiritual journey whether you're in another organized religion like an atr or whether you hoodoo um voodoo conjure a witch a wiccan i don't care what you are you label you however you feel comfortable labeling you and you believe in whatever you believe. But make sure that you're doing it because it's what works for you. Don't leave prison only to put yourself in a new prison cell. Don't leave jail only to go to prison. Don't leave organized religion to say, I'm free. And then come over here and put yourself right back behind bars. Do what works for you and make sure that it works for you. Let me catch up on the comments. Um... You said you setting some folks free, sis. Thank you for helping us. Many are transitioning from Christianity, but throw the baby out with the bathwater because of the pain. Thank you for the words of freedom. Absolutely. Uh, somebody else said, absolutely, it's the same thing. I'm just making sure you guys didn't have any questions. Hey, love bug. And yes, you feel me. I'm glad you guys feel me. 
I got stuff to do today, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this video to a close and take my dogs out to potty and feed them before they kill each other for real. And you know, if you have questions, let me know. If you have, you know, a need for support, reach out to me. This is what I do. I'm not just a crystal lady. I mean, I am, but I'm not just the crystal lady. So we do have the online shop where we have hundreds of crystals, but I do the coaching. I do the spiritual counseling. I do the hands-on work and support with you step by step because this is a journey that none of us can do alone. I have a team that I call on to help me, that I pull from my spiritual toolbox to be like, I need some self-checking, y'all. Or I need to do a session. Or I need to get a reading. Or I need whatever. We all need help. We all need people in our toolbox that we can call on to work with us. So if you're in need of that, reach out and let's see how we can work together. Because that's what I'm here for, guys. You said, healing is so beautiful, but I best I've felt in a long time. Yes. Can you be spiritual and still go to church? Because I have come across many people that say they don't. I don't think there's a rule or restriction that say you can't. I still go to church periodically. Listen, I still have few, a few friends that are Christian. I still have majority of my family that is Christian. Um, and some of my very close friends are still Christian. And as long as they respect my boundaries and they don't force what they still believe on me, I never cross their boundaries and I don't try to change them. I love and respect everybody's individual right to believe as they need to, to do as they need to, to be as they need to, right? And so that means for me, sometimes I'll have a friend that calls me and says, hey, um, you know, we have this special event at church and I would love for you to come support us. Absolutely. Because that works for me. I love fellowship. I love gathering in energy. I'm an energy person. That is how I thrive, so I love being able to get in a like-minded space and be like, let me pull some of that energy. Oh, no, I ain't feeling that. Let me leave that right over there. Okay, that feels good. Let me pull a little bit of that too. And infusing it into whatever else I'm doing and being able to share my energy with them as well. I also don't have a problem if I go somewhere. Like I had an experience and I wrote about it on my blog um, December 2018 where I was invited to church by a friend and this pastor slash prophetess wanted to speak a word to me and I kept rejecting her like she kept trying to pull my energy I was like mm -mm. and at the very end I had let my guard down a little bit after services were over I had let my guard down and she wanted to talk to me and say hey and she got me and it was just some bullshit that happened and I had to let my friend know like listen I'm good I will never come here again and don't you ever ask me again and mark my words her ass is gonna get called out and some shit is gonna happen because you can't keep fucking with people and thinking that it's okay like christian or not whatever you do karma i don't care what you call it it, it cycles back everything we do returns boomerang cycles whatever you want to call it so i think it's personal preference i will go when i feel led to go i don't when i don't want to go decide what works for you and be okay with that. And that may mean that you're going to piss people off. And that may mean that people aren't going to like what you're doing. And that's okay. They don't have to like it. You got to live in this body. And what I tell my Christian friends is this, whatever you believe, I don't care. Do you, but make sure that you're living for you. Cause you're the only one that can live and die in that body. And if you believe in heaven or hell, you're the only one that can get in it for you. So nobody else should be making the decisions that govern your life. And so I pass that on to you guys as well. Look at my guys that brought me here to this live. Yes. <laughs> so again if you guys need support let me know reach out let's talk about how i can help you with either some group work or some private one-on-one -on -one work let's talk about how crystals can support you and yeah we still have the healing one hotline going i don't get to post about it as much because i got my hands in so many pots but we still have the healing one hotline live and thriving so you're always welcome to call that as well guys um, I'm about to bring this live to a close, but you're welcome to post your questions in the comments. And I'll also make sure that the links are in the comments and on the information for the video so that you can reach out to me with whatever services best meet your needs. Mwah. Thank you for tuning in and click the share button. We're also going to put this video on our YouTube channel. So make sure you're hitting subscribe and commenting to help us reach the people that need to see this. Ta-ta.